I don't know. I'd say I'm reasonable. Okay, that's completely unreasonable. You have no idea just how reasonable I have been. Reasonable synonyms are sensible, rational, practical, fair, appropriate. Fit, fitting, suitable, logical. All things I would definitely say describe me. Do they describe you? Welcome to I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. I'm reasonable. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson, which is me. Thank you so much for tuning in. How you guys doing? How are you doing? Oh, okay. Let's talk about these glasses. You're like, oh my God, Zainab, are you losing your vision? No, no, but these glasses are an attempt for me to not lose my vision. Um, These glasses cost $2 on Amazon. Um, actually these glasses probably cost 32 cent because they sent me so many pairs for $2. So like, do they even work? I don't know, but I, I, I be wearing them. Uh, first of all, it makes me feel very professional when I'm in my office. <laughs> you know, it makes me feel like I have business. You know, nothing, nothing says business like a good pair of, you know, eyeglasses, a good pair of specs, right? Actually, you know, we're like on our phones all the time in front of our computers, um, watching TVs, even in my car, it's a big iPad screen. And I'll find by the end of the day, like I might have like a headache that is associated with, um, you know, looking at screens all day and to prevent any headaches, any vision blur, I decided to get these glasses, which are supposed to prevent that. Um, You know, supposed to prevent me, you know, I don't want to inevitably, because my father wore glasses, and now my mother in her uh, mid to late 60s has reading glasses, you know, so it's inevitable. I mean, unless technology does something, and I, you know what I'm saying, do some AI my eyes, you know what I'm saying? And, um, remove that sort of gene from my gene pool. But ultimately, I'll probably need some sort of um, seeing aid, you know, even if it's for reading um, in my older, older, older age. And I'm trying to prolong that process. Ain't nobody trying to be 32. Ain't nobody trying to be 24 doing, doing this, trying to read, trying to read books trying to read stuff, ain't nobody trying to be 25, like, what you, you know, what did you say? Okay, so, that's so funny, I clicked right on Aries, I opened the pick, the, the book right on Aries, and we're in Aries season, um, I haven't even read this book, but I saw it in Urban Outfitters years ago, and was like, oh, that's cute, give me one, ain't nobody trying to be like, oh, that's cute. Ain't nobody trying to hold a cell phone up to here. So I put these glasses on in an attempt to prevent that. But I don't know. Is it making it weird, you guys? Is it, would you rather see my whole face? Would you rather see my face, you guys? It seems like it. Um, Would you rather see my face? All right. Welcome to another episode of I'm Reasonable. Have we been reasonable this week? You guys, are you asking yourselves, right? That's the entire point of this process. Process. What are we in a group therapy session? Uh, But the point of this podcast is to be examining ourselves, our behaviors, our thoughts, our actions, our practices, the situations we find ourselves in and asking ourselves, am I being reasonable? Am I having reasonable expectations of this person or this situation? Am I being reasonable in this situation? Am I judging something from a reasonable lens? Or, you know, have I been given an unreasonable scenario and I got no choice but to be unreasonable? Let's get into my show dates. Um, Um, and November 19th through the 23rd, that's an entire week. I will be in London, United Kingdom, uh, and those tickets are going on sale. The tickets for the rest of those shows can be found on my website. Details are 
uh, in the link, links, 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 <laughs> links are in the details of my podcast. Oh my God. I want to do my teeth look great. Cause I got them clean today. Um, I go to the dentist, uh, twice a year for cleaning. Um, I actually go like, um, you know how you're supposed to go like every six months. I actually go every four months because I am high Katie's risk, meaning that I have a higher risk than most people to get cavities and things like that. And if you know anything about me, you know, I have an incredible sweet tooth. Um, and so, yeah, so I, um, Needed to make sure that was recording. It always scares me because I'm a one woman operation. Um, and so I go to get my teeth cleaned every four months instead of every six months. And she was scraping around in there. And ugh, it's like, girl, what you digging for gold? I ain't got none. I got a little bit of silver back there, but I ain't got no go. But my teeth feel so clean. And you know, every so often, I'm like, ooh, do I need to get my teeth bleached? Like, do I need to get my teeth whitened? Because, you know, we all out here trying to look perfect. We're all trying to achieve something that attains something that is unattainable. Um, And so, and you see, you can, you know, be susceptible to everybody and their veneers. Um, No shade to the veneers, but... You'll be having your regular teeth that you, I was going to say born with, but the teeth that you got when you was five years old, your permanent teeth, you left with those teeth. But then you see everybody out here with a perfect veneers and you're like, do I need to do something? And whenever that happens to me, like, like I actually yesterday was like, oh man, do I need to get my teeth like white in? which I know is not good for your teeth, especially not my teeth. My teeth are sensitive. And so I was like, do I need to get my teeth whitened? And then... My dentist's office called me and was like, hey, just a reminder, you have your teeth cleaning tomorrow at noon. And I'm like, oh, okay." And then as soon as I was done with the cleaning, I looked in the mirror and I was like, "Mm -mm. I just needed them professionally cleaned. Uh, You guys like and subscribe. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you like you hit that thumbs up right now. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up, baby. Hit that. Yo. (laughs) Y'all know. When I'm tired, I'm goofy. Although it's not, y'all know how I be taping. I be like, it's one o'clock in the morning and I'm taping. No, it's a nice four o'clock, 426 in the afternoon. 426 in the afternoon. Um, When I tape on a Tuesday, when I tape, you guys will see this on Wednesday. Um, But like, subscribe. And if you think that, if you like what you're seeing, if if you like what I'm doing, then go the extra mile and share. That will help. You see my numbers are growing. That's all because of you guys. So thank you so much. All right, let's get into it. What is up with Z? What's up with Z? I need to get a song for that, right? What's up with Z? What's up with me? What's up with Z? Why? Why? Whenever people are like, oh, you don't, you're losing your New York accent. I'm like, when? Where? How? Because anybody else that encounters me, all I say is two words and they be like, are you from New York? Where, where are you from? And I'd be like, New York. <laughs> you know how you like, Ugh, I don't want to say, although you know you want to say because you think New York City is the best city in the whole entire world. I'd be like, why? I'm from New York. Shut up. Stop. <laughs> okay. So, Have you guys ever tried to recreate something, um, not a memory or a person, that's weird, Um, but something that you ate, like you had it at a restaurant or you had it at a friend's house or wherever you had it, however you had it, when you get home, you like, you know what? That seems simple enough and I enjoyed this so much, I want to recreate it. So when I was in New Zealand, I had... uh, My friend that hosted us, she, you know, put out sort of like some appetizers before dinner. um, And one of the appetizers were just like some tortilla chips and jalapeno hummus. And jalapeno hummus sounds simple enough, right? But of course, the brand that they're selling in New Zealand is not a brand that's available here. I was even trying to look for like the sister brand, you know, like um, I don't eat mayonnaise, but I do know this in New York when you're buying like the major brand mayonnaise is Hellman's. But when I moved to California, the major brand mayonnaise is Best Foods. But I realize it's the same company. 
It's the same company, same branding, but I guess for whatever reason, East Coasters were liking the name Hellman's and West Coasters were like, no, that doesn't resonate with us. And they called it Best Foods. And so I was also looking for the sister brand, like, okay, this is available in New Zealand, but surely the same manufacturer is producing jalapeno hummus in the United States. Couldn't find it. And so I was like, let me look up recipes. This seems easy enough, right? For hummus, all you need are garbanzo beans or chickpeas. Um, I feel like that's one and the same. I don't know why they call them something different, but I think that that's the same thing. Um, jalapeno, garlic, some salt, cumin, um, maybe some other seasonings, olive oil, right? In a food processor. Um, and so I was able to get all of those things and I made my own jalapeno hummus. But when I was eating it, the recipe called for three jalapenos. Um, now it was a white lady recipe and you know, with the white lady recipes, you also, (laughs) with the white lady recipes, you have to put a little bit more seasoning. You got to kind of check what they adding that they should not be adding. And then you have to like, why are you putting a boiled egg in hummus? Like what you trying, what, what are you trying to do? And you have to just up the seasoning a bit. And I don't mean up the sauce. Ain't nobody trying to give you cholesterol or high blood pressure. I don't even really add salt when I cook. The few times that I cook, I rarely add salt. I'm not really a salt person. Um, But you do have to just up the flavors when you're dealing with the white lady recipes. And so whatever, the recipe called for three jalapenos. And so I didn't want to just go beyond the jalapenos because remember y'all when I tried to make the three ingredient pancakes and I used two bananas instead of three and it came out an unedible scone. Um, So I made sure to get really big jalapenos. So I had three jalapenos, but I had really big jalapenos. And I was eating my jalapeno hummus and it was not hot. And I could not believe it. I was like, even I'm a, I'm a, I'm, so here's the video. It's late. I just got home from doing my spots tonight and um, I made my own hummus. I roasted jalapeno, I roasted garlic, and then I just put everything in a food processor. I use canned chickpeas, don't come for me. I use organic. Um, and then I have the, these grain free chips. Um, let's see. I took too big of a bite. Hmm. That's pretty tasty. It's not so, it's not as smooth because I didn't use tahini. I don't like tahini. I know, I know. How could I not like tahini? I use three jalapenos. I think I'm going to use more next time. You see, even in the video, I'm like, okay, I got to add more jalapenos. And I didn't even really think about it. Fast forward, um, some days later, I'm sitting at brunch with a friend of mine and I'm telling her, I'm like, yeah, girl, I made some jalapeno hummus and it was not hot. Like, I don't know. I can't remember if I bought regular jalapenos or organic jalapenos, but I shouldn't even say regular. GMO'd jalapenos or organic jalapenos but they weren't hot and so my friend said verbatim she was like (laughs) she was like oh girl you know white people wrote to the farmers and now jalapenos are genetically modified to be to not be as hot that's literally what my friend said she said white people wrote into the farmers which what's the farmer's address You know, when you just know, when you just know the demographic of people that complained about something. And so it's like, yeah, of course, there's white people all over the world that like spicy stuff. They like jalapenos and any other peppers. But she just generalized it. She was like, yeah, girl, white people wrote into the farmers. I was like, the farmer's market? She said, no, the farmer's. I was like, okay. (laughs) And had them genetically modify jalapenos so that they are not as hot. And I was like... Wait, what? I couldn't believe this. And so sure enough, I Googled it, found an article on theguardian.com that confirms what my friend is saying. The jalapeno pepper has long been synonymous with spiciness. But if you've perceived a decline in its power, it's not your imagination. Some jalapenos truly are getting less spicy thanks to shadowy forces. 
My friend called those shadowy forces white people. The dining critic Brian Reinhardt blew the whole thing wide open in a piece, the Dallas area publication D Magazine last year. Last week, it caught the eye of a health writer, Timothy Faust, who posted, quote, Big AG, Big Agriculture. Big AG actually made jalapenos less spicy. You're not going nuts. End quote. He clearly struck a chord. Heat lovers are fired up over the diabolical scheme, said the New York Post. What the hell? <laughs> jalapenos aren't hot anymore? Lamented the Food Institute. I have tested these bland jalapenos and they are an abomination. That is exactly how I felt. It's like I could have just made hummus. I had to take the extra step of roasting the jalapenos. But if it was just going to taste like not spicy hummus. I could have just left the jalapenos out. Anywho, um, the long-term despicification of the jalapeno is a deliberate choice, not the product of a bad season or of weather. This is what Reinhardt wrote. In short, most jalapenos are sent to factories to be used in prepared foods such as salsa and chips and sausages. The companies making these products want to control, they want control over their product spice level. And the control is easier to achieve if the jalapenos are mild. And so basically what they do is they extract, so they modify the jalapeno, right? Extracting any spiciness from the jalapeno, right? And so you still get the flavor of jalapeno without the feeling of hot. And then what they do is they take something genetically made, a spice, like, like a, um, the level of, of heat, they take that genetically and then add it in after. Ain't that crazy? I was like, I couldn't believe it. And so today on What's Up With Z, uh, my question is, um, is big agriculture unreasonable? Is it unreasonable? Because when I think about jalapenos, besides, so I had to look it up, right? I was like, okay, besides the spice level, besides it being heat, is our jalapenos good for anything else? Like, do they provide anything else? And jalapenos are rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, and potassium. So that's good. Um, but they also have carotene. Carotene, which is an antioxidant, um, it, fight, it helps to fight damaged cells, um, as well as vitamin K and vitamin Bs. Um, wait, wait, let me get that right. Um, And okay, and so a lot of their health 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 benefits come from a compound called uh, capsaicin. Cap cap capsaicin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, so forgive me. Um, so they do have benefits, even if you're removing the heat level. It's still beneficial to eat a uh, jalapeno. However, don't nobody want no bland jalapeno. There's something bland in the produce marketplace that has all of these benefits, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin B, vitamin K, potassium, antioxidants to fight da damage stuff. Has all of that with the bland flavor. Maybe I should do like a challenge and taste like a jala uh, organic jalapeno for you guys and then a, and a, a GMO jalapeno and see like how different. I went to a restaurant, an organic raw restaurant yesterday with a friend for dinner and I had jalapenos in my salad and I could not get through the, I had, I was, I was like <gasps> the whole time. So I'm going to say wherever they got those jalapenos from, that's where I need to go. But for this week's uh, What's Up With Z, is it reasonable, is it reasonable for big agriculture, big AG, to alter a vegetable, a fruit, or an item of produce just because people don't like it. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Okay, this week's stories. Uh, so this week's stories, they all come from TikTok. And it's kind of going to sound like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, okay? Because I got an unreasonable story, a really reasonable story, and one that's like on the fence, you guys will help me decide. Okay, so let's start with the one that... I don't think I'm on the fence, but maybe I'm just not reading this. Like maybe I just don't see the big deal. Right. So the first story is Senator Brent Taylor, who is a Republican 
sen- senator representing Tennessee, he referenced ugly strippers <laughs> on the Senate floor when talking about trying to pass a bill on how hotel tax money could tax money could be spent. Let's check this video out. <laughs> Because a lot of people in Memphis have worked on this legislation. I mean, they have worked harder than a bunch of ugly strippers to try to get this done. <laughs> and I want to make sure that uh, we don't that we don't uh, drop the ball here. So I'm willing to to roll this to next week to give me opportunity to get with the chairman of the finance committee. Without objection. <laughs> All right. So. I'm not sure. Okay, obviously, the black lady's face, right, was like, what? Did he just say what I think he said? Like, why would he even be talking about strippers and why would he say that they're ugly, right? And I feel like maybe his words weren't the best, but I get what he was trying to illustrate. I don't even know if I agree with him. I don't know nothing about a bill trying to be passed having to do with hotel taxes, okay? We ain't even talking about that. We're just talking about simply is is his comparison of ugly strippers inappropriate? And I don't think so. I mean, I'm a comedian. I think comedians, I think writers, I think creatives. I think that's the point of like language, right? To use uh, imagery to convey the story that you're trying to tell, right? So I think most of us, if ever we think about a stripper, if ever we think about um, some sort of like sexual fantasy, if ever we think about some sort of desired fantasy, we're not imagining them to be unattractive, right? Now, I know that there's ugly strippers in the world because there's people who are aesthetically challenging, right? And they work in all professions. And one of those professions happens to be stripping. And so sure, there are aesthetically challenging strippers. I mean, is it like taboo to say ugly now? Just like it's taboo to say fat, like you should probably say, you know, plus size or, you know, whatever, right? Um, more to love or whatever the term is, but is it, are we, are we, I don't know. Is it inappropriate to say ugly now? Like I tend to say aesthetically challenging because I know that ugly is like a triggering word for people. Um, but I think that it would have still conveyed this. I just think that like we can easily get like a ugly stripper does have to work harder than a stripper who visually is appealing to most people. I mean, it's not rocket science, right? But I don't know. Is it inappropriate to be mentioning that like on the Senate floor? (laughs) And I don't like, I know he's a guy saying it and what people might automatically assume is that he's saying that there's a stripper out there. I don't know. Maybe he was just at the strip club. I mean, he is a senator in Tennessee. So maybe he was at a strip club and the ugly, the, the, the aesthetically challenging stripper came into his mind and he was like, dang, she working real hard, you know, to get this money, to get these same ones that this cute stripper over there that ain't doing that much is getting all the money. And so, you know, that's how I feel when I'm trying to pass this hotel tax bill. But I don't know. Maybe people automatically was like, is it is it sexist? But he didn't say the gender of the stripper. Did strippers come in all of all gen, all gender identities? G- strippers come all heights, all ethnic backgrounds. And so if you thought of something specific or a specific person, then maybe that's on you. But just the idea of an aesthetically challenging stripper, because the whole job, the essence of the job is You know, ain't nobody going into the DMV like they better be attractive if they want to process my driving record. They better be, you know, ain't nobody going to the post office like, oh, they better be font. They better be some beautiful ass postal workers if they want to mail my letters. No, but kind of like the stipulation of some professions is that there be some attraction, you know, 
Um, whatever that attraction is, you know, if maybe if I, if I got ugly feet, then maybe I'm not going to be a foot model, right? Or maybe if I am a foot model, maybe I got to do special things with my foot if they ain't the cutest feet. So I don't know. You guys can tell me like, was him saying, comparing the, the, um, difficulty of him trying to get this bill passed to an ugly stripper? Was that unreasonable or not? I felt like it wasn't. I felt like, yeah, is it maybe taboo? Is it like kind of shocking? Cause you know, it's like certain things. It's like, you know, you say certain things, you shouldn't say certain things at work. It's like, oh, this isn't so bad, but maybe on the, at the, at, maybe, maybe the worst thing is it's unprofessional. Um, it makes things do, like it makes you bring like very casual language into a into a not casual environment. But I also think like, again, I don't live in Tennessee. I don't typically identify with the Republican Party, but I like to understand when people I think I think the biggest part of like communication is un understanding. Right. It's like it ain't no point in me talking to somebody if they not understanding what I'm saying. And so I'm always going to try to express myself in the best way that it seems like that the person that I'm trying to get through to can understand me. And so I don't know. It was it was like <laughs> a really clear image to me. It's like, yeah, you are ugly stripper. You probably got to work hard. The next one, um, this is <laughs> this is actually in very a very unreasonable situation, but the most reasonable thing I, I think I've seen on the internet this week, on the news this week. So and and this happens, right? We find ourselves in very unreasonable scenarios. So all across the country, um, I think even around the world, there are protests happening on college campuses um, as a result of what the media is calling a war in Gaza and what college students and other people all throughout this country and the world are calling a genocide. Um, but there are protests happening on college campuses, speeches being made, basically action being taken in an attempt to have a ceasefire in an attempt to get our government led by President Joe Biden to stop funding the Israeli government and what they are doing to the Palestinian people, the people in Gaza. And so that's not, I, I don't believe that disagreeing with that is, I don't believe disagreeing with funding the uh, Benjamin and Yahoo and the Israeli government. I don't believe that that is anti-Semitic. Um, I do believe that there is anti-Semitism that exists in the same way that racism exists and in the same way that sexism exists, prejudice, uh, uh, um, you know, classism exists. That's anti-Semitism definitely exists, but I don't believe to call for a ceasefire to say that this is wrong. What's happening is anti-Semitic. But like I said, all across campus, both people who are for and against, you know, you know, are, are having protests on campus and are, they're, they're, it, there's unrest. And that's going to happen when an injustice is happening. So this is happening all across campus, all across college campuses in our country, in, in the United States. But USC in particular, this made the news, USC actually cancels its valedictorian speech. Backlash tonight after the University of Southern California cancels this year's graduation speech by its own valedictorian. Asna Tabasum is a medical engineering student who is also Muslim, and she beat out nearly 100 other students for this year's top spot. But now the university says the discussion of her selection took an alarming tenor. USC blames unspecific threats to safety as the reason for scrapping her speech. She's a valedictorian. She worked hard. Let her give her speech. If you need to, get a transcript of her speech. And if she doesn't stick to the transcript, then you can, and something happens, it incites some sort of reaction that is uncontrollable, then you can then release her speech like this is what we approved. As a comedian, anytime we do any sort of, of comedy on television, they always ask us for the transcripts of our jokes. They always ask us for that. I don't know if you guys remember a couple of um, years ago, I don't know, maybe like two years ago, Dave Chappelle did, hosted SNL 
one of the many times he hosted and he did he did his speech people weren't happy about it and um I believe Lorne Michaels made a statement saying that he did not do the speech that he did not do the set of the transcript that they that he submitted. So I'm just saying they could ask her to submit a transcript so they can get an idea of what she plans on saying. And then if she doesn't, because that's possible, right? Just because you submit a transcript doesn't mean you can't then veer from the script, right? That happens all the time. It's called improv or or it's called a different plan. Um, but they could then, you know, if they needed anything to like save their ass, if something happened, then they can release like, oh, okay, well, this is what we approved. This is what we thought she, this is the speech that she thought we thought she would give at commencement. And this is not what, and then ultimately she would be the bad guy, but you know, depending on how you feel about what she says. Um, but because they stopped her from just giving the speech period, USC, you're the bad guy. You're limiting her priv- the thing, the very thing she worked, she beat out hundreds of students. She's a medical student, enrolled at USC and beat out medical student, uh, medical student, beat out hundreds of students to become this year's valedictorian. And so you're taking a privilege away from her that she earned. Also, you're messing with amendments. She has the right. It's freedom of speech. But what's really reasonable that I wanted to show you guys is I watched her interview. Um, I watched an interview that she did um, with ABC News. And I want you guys to just check out this interview um, and just see how reasonable she is, how wonderful she was was in this interview. The Israel-Hamas war has presented a serious challenge for colleges. We've seen it all across the country. Now USC is not allowing its valedictorian, who's publicly supported Palestinians, to give a speech at next month's commencement citing security concerns. It is a decision that has been praised by several pro-Israel groups, but criticized by the country's largest Muslim civil rights organization. The student at the center of this controversy joins us now, Asna Tabassum. Asna, uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. I want to start with this statement that the college provost said in part that the intensity of the feelings around allowing you to speak, quote, escalated to the point of creating substantial risk relating to security and uh, disruption at the commencement, pointing out harassment and violence seen on other campuses. But, you know, I know you had a meeting with them. I'm wondering, did they I like her face. She's so composed, right? She's so composed, but she ain't here for the BS. And it's so inspiring to see someone so young. It just, just handle herself. Just watch. They tell you anything specific, a specific threat that was made against you, or have you had any specific threats made against you? Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I We'll have to say, no, nothing specific was, you know, offered to me. No specific details regarding security threats or safety concerns were offered to me. So a lot of people and you kind of, you know. So basically, it's actually not her. It it's it. They're saying that it is pro-Israel groups, you know, that don't want her to the rather not pro-Israel groups. Let me, let me not say that. There are groups that are, that don't want to hear groups on campuses, people on campuses, people that will be attending that don't want to hear any sort of pro-Palestine speech. This goes back to a link. You know, you've talked about this. It's posted on social media to a a, a site there. Uh, Another person created this, we should point out. You did not create it. You posted it to a site. Some believe it contains anti-Semitic views, uh, really some vile anti-Semitic views, including calling for the abolishment of the state of Israel. So do you think that's part of it? And do you believe the state of Israel should be abolished? So the... Why would he even ask her that? Why, if, if the whole point is to not... If, if she... Why would he ask her that? Does she believe, what does this have to do with her not being able to give her valedictorian speech? Why would he ask her, does she believe that the state of Israel should be abolished? When it comes to abolishing the state of Israel, I do want to point out the rest of the link. And so the very next sentence talks about the peaceful coexistence of Arabs and Jews. And people always want to talk about one part. 
They always want to talk about one part of the clip, one part of the post, one part of the sentence, one part. They don't never want to consider the full context. It's just like she just said, the peaceful coexistence of the people of Israel and the people of Palestine. I always, I'm very specific when I say it because I know that not everybody who lives in Israel is Jewish and not everybody who lives in Palestine, Palestine is Muslim. Not, not, not all Palestinians are Muslim. I think it points to what I've been saying since the beginning of this issue, which is that I'm committed to human equality and to human rights. And so this link, I... I encourage people to look at it in its entirety rather than looking at one specific example. For example, you know, it's discussing both the one state and the two state solution. It's discussing the history of the region. And I think that there's important information to, for people to understand on their own and come to their own conclusions about. When it comes to abolishing the state of Israel, I will say I want to abolish apartheid. If there is one state and two state in there, you, you could see a two state solution. I, I think the abolishment of Israel is what bothered a lot of people, but you would advocate for a two state solution. You see how he's trying, like you see the language that he's using. She said, I don't I, like she was like, educate yourself on one state and two state. She's like, I'm just giving you information. She was like, but how I feel is I want to abolish apartheid. Now, you can decide if you believe apartheid is somewhere or not. That's that's for you to decide. So Israel would still exist and then there would be a Palestinian state. Is that what I'm hearing? So, no, I'm not necessarily committing to a one state or a two state solution. I'm simply saying that this information on the website offered information from multiple perspectives. And so my endorsing of any one single perspective is unfounded. OK, so USC has said this is not meant to infringe upon your free speech. Do you feel like it's doing just that? So in its most technical terms, um, the ability to give a speech at commencement is a privilege, right? It's, it's not necessarily free speech. But what I will say that, you know, I expressed my views and I expressed my views online and the hatred that was leveled at me because of myself expressing these views um, you know, I think ultimately was part of the reason why USC caved in. And so whether free speech in its most technical terms is being debated here is maybe up for debate. But I will say speech is an issue and speech is being stifled. What were you going to speak about? I mean, there's just a lot of talk about what you posted, that link and what your beliefs may be. Were you going to talk about that at graduation or were you going to give a different kind of speech? So the valedictorian honor is ultimately a unifying honor, right? It's emblematic of USC's unifying values. I think that's a reasonable question, right? That's what I'm saying. It's like, what was the transcript? Like, I think it's reasonable for him to be like, all right, girl, well, what was in the speech? You know, let us know. Was you was you going to say something or was it, you know, that 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 is like his only reasonable question, in my opinion. But look at her just sit, look at her composed. And and I don't mean composed like on her best behavior. I mean, unfazed. She is unfazed by this interview, these tactics, and the narrative or misinformation being dispersed. And I think I take that to heart, you know. Um, I, I wanted my speech to be in the genre of a valedictory speech. And so that being said, I wanted to impart a message of hope. I also wanted to impart a message of responsibility, right? We are given a wonderful set of higher education. We have been given the knowledge of learning how to learn. And so I wanted to encourage my peers to, you know, learn about the world and come to their own conclusions and then act to change the world in the ways that they see fit. And so ultimately taking in my role as valedictorian, I wanted to be a unifying voice for all students. And that was preemptively taken away from me. All right, Asna, thanks so much. Uh, we really do appreciate you taking the time. Of course, thank you. I just thought that it was, given the circumstances, right, given um, the scenario, um, and then also to find herself um, sort of, to find herself in this place at like at one of her biggest accomplishments thus far in her life, so young in her life, um, I just thought that she really was unfazed, and I it was it was the most reasonable thing that I have seen on the internet this week. Lastly, let's get into the most unreasonable thing. <laughs> 
I don't want you guys to think that I uh, don't want to hear your opinions on that. Feel free, please. Um, definitely give me your comments on how you feel about her um, preemptively being um, uh, stopped from giving her valedictorian speech um, at USC. Um, last story, the most unreasonable thing, really quick, that I have seen all week, not, yeah, all week thus far, on um, TikTok, I mean, just on, I mean, the internet's period. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this shit, y'all. Now, let me just tell you, in the fight for edges, I mean, the past year, I have seen so many hair companies start selling edges, like faux edges. Like, I've seen so many girls glue on a hairline. I've seen men glue on a hairline. I have never, this is the first time I saw somebody cut off, cut, cut off the edge, and then what seems to be relax it. So this is one of them videos when you see it, you just don't, under, you have to watch it until the end. Cause you like, I got to see what's happening. I got to see why she's doing everything the opposite of what anybody is trying to do. Okay, so she's cutting off the dead ends, right? That makes sense. Glorilla is playing, but I had to mute it because YouTube will take it down because we don't have the rights to play Glorilla. Now, look, here's the part. Here, Look at her length. It's like as soon as I saw this, I was like, uh, what? I, I, think, I, think that, I think my speculation was correct. I think my assumption that she was going to do something unreasonable was correct. Look at the girl face. The girl face, it's like the girl, you know when you sitting in the chair and you don't speak up and you know they messing you up and you just sit there like, you know what, this, this, maybe I did something. You get what I'm saying? Maybe I deserve this and like, God, is this what you want from me? You know, like something happens to you when you're in the service is so bad, like you're getting a service, especially when it comes to your hair and you're a woman. And you just sit in there because the mirror is right in front of you. You just sit in there watching them do you dirty. <laughs> I'm thinking it was going to be like a faux hawk or something. Or she was going to color it a different color or something. Why would you, why would you perm edges when you could just lay them down with... When you can just lay them down with edge control. Yo, she's so mad. She's so mad. And she already gave her 50% deposit. So she's thinking right now, how do I get up out of this lady's chair? And how do I call PayPal and Cash App and dispute the $120 I done sent this lady? Girl, that's supposed to be a silk press. That is at best a blowout. So not only did she give mess up the side, but also the hair ain't even fl girl. The hair ain't. Let me fix my hair before I talk about her hair. Right? Let me. What's my hair doing? Okay, I mean I've been to the gym, so I'm sweating it out. I'm setting. I'm sweating the silk press out. But that is not a silk press, and that is not done. And you should not be happy with that. You should not be happy with that as a client. I almost want to do my research, zoom in, and see what city and state and street that is to make sure that business there is never had again. She happy. She happy. I don't know, y'all. Tell me, did y'all think the end result of that? First of all, I don't understand cutting off the edge. It was only, it was only this. It wasn't the whole side like a like a faux hawk. It wasn't like, you know, half pixie cut. It was just like, I thought maybe she was about to lay a wig or something, 
or maybe get a tattoo, right? That's the only time you shave that little bit. It's like, you know what? I'm about to get my, I'm about to get Bay's name tattoo here. And then that way, every time I swoop back my hair, it's going to be like, yep, I love him. That was nothing. <laughs> y'all, let me know if y'all thought that was reasonable or unreasonable. Before I get out of here, um, we got to ask Z, quick ask Z. This actually came from a very close friend of mine. She texted me the other day in the text simply read if you spend a week with someone is it a one night stand ask z if you spend a week with someone of course her and i got on the phone um and talked about i was like okay girl what, what do you mean you spend a week with somebody like did you just meet them so she flew to a different country um she met she meets a guy um the second night that she's there and they hang out you know, whatever. They meet each other, they hang out, and he comes with her back to her hotel. And they end up spending the whole week together. And I was like, oh, well, is he homeless? And she was like, what do you mean? I was like, because maybe that's why he stayed the week, because you gave him a week of, like, lodging. You know, I mean, I'm like, I'm, of course, she's my friend, so I made sure to let her know, like, yeah, I mean, of course, I think that you... I'm not trying to say somebody is trying to get away from you. Of course, I believe that somebody can spend a week with you just because you're great and wonderful and all the things you have to tell friends, you know, for them to stay whole, you know, um, and that you also believe. But it's like, girl, that ain't what I, you know what I'm saying? Like the re very real thing beyond you being great is that he could have been homeless. So are you sure that that? Oh, she was like, oh, no, no, no. She was like, we actually spent the week together um, and. I ended up checking out of, she said that she ended up checking out of her hotel after the second night um, and went back to his place and spent three more days at his place. And they was in bliss, waking up together, uh, going to sleep together. She was like some of the things that she had already planned because she left the, you know, she went and did this kind of vacation by her, this solo vacation. And so she had like tour, touristy things planned or whatever like that. And he, of course, had to work. Um, I'm saying, of course, right? <laughs> he uh, thank God <laughs> had to work. Um, and so she would go do like the things that she had planned on high, her itinerary, like the touristy things. And then he would come get her when he was done or when she was done. And they had like a whole week of like shacking up and romance. And then she came back here and that was it. And none of them had any expectation of like, no, no one is trying to reach out to the other person. And, and she was like, is that a one night stand? And I'm like, well, listen, it's, it's definitely not a one night stand. Maybe there's a new term that needs to be created, right? Like a one week stand, you know, but I don't see why it matters if neither one of you, you know, sometimes, I mean, one night stand is a term that exists just to explain like, right. Oh, I met the person one night we hooked up and that was it. But ain't nobody trying to figure out if something was a one night stand or not, you know, especially if neither one of you are interested in pursuing it any further, then what does it matter? Like, why are we spending energy? And that's ultimately what I said. I was like, do you want anything? Do you want to be like trying to pursue a long distance relationship with this guy? And she was like, no, it was just really fun. I just don't really know how to categorize it in my life. And I'm like, okay, well, why do you need to categorize it as anything except an experience that you enjoyed? I asked, I was like, did you enjoy it? And she was like, oh my God, it was like, it was like, I really enjoyed my trip, but it was the best part of my trip. And I'm like, girl, you know, how sometimes you got to check in with your friends because they actually don't know the truth yet. They don't know the truth about themselves yet. I said, girl, do you like this man? And would you like to be still in contact with him? Although you are now back in the United States and he is still in the country in which you met him. And she was like, no, no, Zainab. Like, I'm really like, she was like, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it. I mean, if he, if he putting it all in his court, right? I said, okay, what you need to do. Um, she, I was like, what you need to do is you have to decide what you want. Are you able to leave it there? Are you able to just enjoy it for what it was? Le I'm not that type of person. I know that. I'm unreasonable. It's all love. We either in love together forever or nothing with me. That's how I approach it. 
Now, do we end up staying together? Maybe not. But how I'm going into it, I'm going into it. We we 10 toes down. You jump, I jump. What's up, Jack? That's how I'm going into it. But I'm I can be unreasonable when it comes to love. <laughs> I know that about myself. No, no, it takes no. I don't even, I told y'all when we was talking about Ricky, um, Ricky Martin's penis. I don't even want to, I can't even think about a, a person sexually until I'm in love with them. You know how unreasonable that is? But I know myself. I know myself. And so if I'm spending a week with you, I ain't spending no one night stand with you, no one week stand with you. If I'm in a bed with you, we get married. That's what I think. What you think? I said, but you have to decide. You have to be very honest with yourself. You know, like you have to decide what it is that you want. Are you the type of person that can just have an experience like this, however much you enjoyed it, and leave it where it's at? Let that man go on and live the rest of his life. But if you believe that you would be behaving differently if he were pursuing you, if you believe that you would be actively allowing him to pursue you if he were trying to pursue you beyond the time that you guys spent together in his country if if the, then that would make me feel like you are interested and you are interested in more but because of what society tells us about you know gender roles and how women should be and you know all that type of stuff or maybe you don't you know you don't want to set yourself up to fail or maybe you don't believe you know I don't know maybe you are not that hopeful or optimistic maybe that's the thing or maybe you're just scared of rejection that he doesn't feel the same way maybe that's the reason why you're having a hard time admitting that I really enjoy him. I spent a week with him and I would like to continue to get to know him in whatever capacity I can. You know, that's something you got to ask yourself. And then once you ask yourself that and have like a very, you know, honest conversation, if you can get to that, then you make the moves accordingly. Um, I ain't even going to ask if my advice was reasonable because I know. I know that was very reasonable advice, but you guys tell me what you guys think about her situation. Hashtag it with Ask Z in the comments. That's it for me this week. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you guys subscribe if you haven't already before you go and check out the cities. Um, they're in the details of this podcast. If I'm coming to a city near you, then make sure you get those tickets. If I'm not coming to a city near you, but you know people in cities that I am coming to, make sure you let them know, yo, this is a girl you got to see. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Until next time, try your best to be reasonable. Bye.